sort of like my wife the summer that I actually wrote this book. So she tells me I was very difficult to live with. And that would be different from the rest of the day. <laughs> Necessity may be the mother of invention, but they're all still orphans. Well, sorry, I wrote things off, but contemplating the recent turn of events in human life was too exciting. I lost my composure. I can continue now that I've calmed down a bit. In their decisions, they have embraced the true logic of hell. This is our great secret. You see, the splitting of the atom has made possible the means of their destruction. And for that, we are truly grateful to them. And what is even better is that this is not just a good for them. It has become for them a necessity. They believe they must have this power to defend their world. They possess the power to destroy themselves and all other life on that miserable ball of dirt not because they choose to, but because they believe it is imperative for their survival. Now, irony may not be dead among them, but it is on suicide watch. They have embedded within their world the logic of hell and are unable to see it. All they know is that some must have this power and others must not. And this only leads them further into the morass because they don't have the power of destruction. They, the ones who don't have the power of destruction believe they are at the mercy of those who do. And the ones who have not joined the club think that they must have the bomb or suffer threat or blackmail at the hands of the powerful. All we need is patience because at some point they will stumble into our happily waiting embrace. The one that suffocates them. This is not even the most sublime aspect of their blindness. This horror they unleashed with their own hands carries the potential for destruction worse than the Holocaust, and they do not recognize it. Indeed, they have so acclimated themselves to the poison in their system, they do not feel the deadening of the limbs, the numbing of the mind, and the extinction of social imagination. Few among them really questioned whether dropping the atom bomb was ethical. Was maybe an act as morally horrific as the countless murder of millions of Jews. No one admits it was in truth a crime against humanity. But then no one wants to say that about war in the first place. The ones that do see what true reality looks like, we just tar with the unserious brush. They are not true, serious people. The way that the great ones among them are, they won, and that's all that matters. Any question about the morality of the act, any thought that maybe it was as little justified as the gas ovens, is met by blank stares and anger. How indignant they get if the question is raised. Well, of course the answer comes. We didn't start it. <coughs> We sure as hell finished it. So, suck on that. You can see the anger when one of them suggests that all of the rationale offered doesn't measure up to the death of so many innocents that day. They deserved it. They started it. If we had not done it to them, they would have done it to us. Those words are sweet to our ears because it means they have learned nothing. Absolutely nothing. They cannot imagine living any longer without the beast in their midst. But instead of its being a matter of something that can or cannot be, now it has to be. The compulsion of it suits us. And the ongoing justification of it entertains us. Because when all is said and done and they stand in our realm, all of their excuses, all of their justifications, they won't mean a thing. We don't care. We don't care why they destroyed one another. Only that they did. And that they continue to do so. <coughs> How many crimes have been cloaked with the phrase, it was necessary? Or the one I love even more, we had no other choices. There are always other choices. Just not the ones they want to make. 
So you can now understand the ways that we make space for ourselves in the world. We watched as they put a face of evil to a particular type of atrocity, the extinction of millions, while the ultimate evil, the ability to destroy their entire world with its billions, numerous times over, went right past them in the name of the ultimate good. The world, rightly horrified at the Holocaust, has constructed itself around a greater evil, potential annihilation. They truly have been exiled from the garden because having tasted from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they are unable to discern the difference between the two, even though they know there's a distinction. And with this, our kingdom on earth is secure. Tags, World War II, Thomas Friedman, Iran.